Hi again, it is still September 17, 2019. In the video that I've just posted going over this article, Climate Anxiety Groups Are the New Self-Care Support Groups Are Growing Around the Country. Well, they're growing around the world. I thought that this article ended right here because I saw, oh, other articles. Oh, it's not over. Yeah, here. Arizona-based activist Laura Schmidt said that she felt like her years spent working in the environmental nonprofit space were weren't fruitful because she was unable to force people to look at the problem. Ah. Uh, maybe it's because there are a lot of people who really don't believe in climate change, global warming. They know enough to know that uh, something's wrong with the IPCC's so-called science. Unfortunately, uh, they, they don't know about, well, the full picture, you know, the United Nations Agenda 2030, the reshaping of the United States, um, the new world that is being reshaped as I speak. They do not know about weather modification. They don't know about uh, the geoengineering, though one just has to look up and man, is it in your face that something ain't quite right. Um, but uh, you're not fruitful, Laura, because you're working. Uh, everything that you're doing is based on a lie. All right, well, I, I just want you to see this. Um, identifying, she identified tools that activists can use to fight burnout. She developed a 10-step program. I said in the video that I had posted that in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, they actually had a 12-step program for uh, climate change. I wish I could remember what it was called. I can't remember. Uh, that's where all of these young people, you know, were talking about how guilty they felt for, yeah, driving a car. Uh, and, well, the essence of what they were saying is, I feel guilty because I'm alive. And I, 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 I did attend one meeting. I don't know that that was like the first meeting. I don't know if it went on. I, I just, look, I started shaking my head in, well, <laughs> a long time ago, but in regards to what we are all living collectively. Oh, I don't know, 2010. And I've just been shaking my head uh, for nine years. Good Grief Network. Good Grief. Good Grief, Charlie Brown. A program that's similar to Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Each week focuses on a different part of the curriculum ranging from confronting morality to practicing gratitude to clearing past trauma. Confronting morality when the whole program is based on a lie? How does that work? Regardless of the week's lesson, there is a focus on how to properly accept, process, and act upon the feelings that the severity of climate change can bring. The tenth step is action-oriented and acts as a means to help express climate anxiety in a positive way while taking the pressure off the individual to save the world. Yeah, you need to clear headspace. If someone's internal world is chaotic, it will make them act out in destructive ways. People should not be acting out in fear and panic despite acting towards an uncertain future. Listen to what these people, these, uh, oh my God. 
that they're going on AOC. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, AOC. She actually showed up here. The movement which shot to fame after AOC joined their sit-in at Nancy Pelosi's office. <sighs> okay. Well, look, I'm sorry. Um, we have a tendency to gravitate towards the familiar. And gravitating towards the batshit, crazy, narcissistic nut jobs means that there's something wrong with that individual who is like, oh wow, it's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So that's why, you know, I very often say, in order to change the world, you really need to change yourself. You need to focus on yourself. You know, that internal chaos. Um, you need to, uh, well, it's more of an internal disintegration and you need to integrate all of those parts within you and going through that self-reflective, you know, uh, hard work. It is hard work. Um, facing the truth about your own self and yeah, reevaluating all of those beliefs that you have. Hey, reevaluate the belief in climate change. Wow, that would be a start. So uh, we don't get anywhere the, and everything just continues to proceed as is only getting worse when so many individuals are not doing, you know, don't ever focus on, hey, you know what? Maybe I should focus on myself and uh, grow and mature and uh, become, you know, my authentic self. The best way to get there, practice every single day. Speaking honestly and living honestly. You take off that mask and you live honestly in the world. Well, yeah, it's hard because you'll find not a lot of people do it. Yeah, well, here, they focus on political engagement. This is that group, you know, the Good Grief Network and uh, there's another organization, Sun something, but they're focusing on political engagement, like making the Green New Deal a top issue in the 2020 election, uh, organizing demonstrations at city halls across the nation, and that global climate strike Friday. Everybody's going to walk off their jobs walk out of schools, walk out of colleges, and they're going to be all involved in a lie. Strikes are planned in 150 countries, leading up to the United Nations Climate Summit on September 23rd. Yay. Well, yeah, apparently um, there's you know, an awful lot of emotions that these people have to get out. Climate anxiety would come out in little spurts. Oh, people would say, isn't it great that the world is ending in 12 years? It's in the back of people's minds and it's constantly over our heads. There's a real fear for the next generation. Thinking about the future, I can't imagine planning for the future when we only have 12 years. Well, okay, nothing like a lie that takes root, huh? Um, I, I, how many people do you really think are afraid that the world's going to end in 12 years? And then when you think about, you know, we've been saying that people are afraid of the truth. They fear the truth. See, I think a lot of it comes down to self-centered, uh, leave me alone, I just want to live my, you know, selfish, comfortable life, 
and I don't want to do anything. Um, I don't want to change and I don't want anything disrupting my comfort, so go away. Now, I did have a friend who was, I don't know, eight years older than I, when I was about mm, 50. Uh, she's saying to me, well, Carol, you, you talk about scary things. Um, I was stumped. I, I've been stumped a lot in my life, but I was really stumped with that. And I, um, scary things. Uh, are you an adult? Don't adults handle the scary things? I thought adults were able to face the scary things in life. You know, you, you don't, you don't do this to children like AOC screaming, we only have 12 years. You don't do that. If you're an adult, you just don't do that. But she's not an adult. Okay. Um, you just allow children, you know, to be children. Uh, and the adults take care of the scary things. I, I have, I, I'm, all right, so you got these support groups and, oh my God, you know, I need to get out my feelings about climate change and my anxiety and my depression and my, my despair. So, why would they be so scared about the truth? Well, they're already despairing and depressed and anxious uh, about a lie they've been told. So why is everybody so scared about the truth? You know, it's like, frankly, you know, they're, they're literally, they're activists for their own, for their own prison, that they, they are actively working for their own prison. That should scare the shit out of them. Oh wait, that's the truth. I'm confused. I'm confused. I've never gotten the, oh, th this is scary, this is scary stuff. You know, maybe it's just, you know, my growing up in evil. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like, all right, well, uh, I just don't have that mindset. I don't have that. Oh my God, I'm. Uh, this is too scary. So, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Yeah, you know, maybe that's one of the advantages of growing up in a, in a, you know in an environment that leaves you traumatized. <laughs> you grow to be an adult and, uh, well, you kind of realize that the world is really warped. You realize that, well, you have a different perspective on life than most and you don't see things. You, you, well, I'll speak for myself. Reality, not negative, not positive, just, I, you know, kind of firmly based in reality. And reality has never been um, what a lot of people have said it was in this country. You know, that we're exceptional and morally superior and, oh, aren't we fabulous and all of this kind of stuff. No. I never had that sense, but, you know, maybe I was just hardwired for all of this. Let me know from you guys, you know, who have been also raised in those fabulous, uh, unhealthy, violent, um, abusive, neglectful, 
households. I mean, do you find this stuff like, oh, this is too scary and I can't deal with it? I, it just angers me that people have that and they won't deal with their fears. It's very frustrating. Well, I have other bad news and this is something that I knew was coming about. The climate crisis is poised to make huge swaths of America totally uninsurable. People are going to be trapped because once uninsurable, good luck selling the house. So climate change spurs increasingly destructive wildfires in California. Insurance companies have begun to deem parts of the state too risky to cover. Climate experts warn that areas across the country are becoming more prone to natural disasters, putting homes at risk in more ways than one. Over 300 and 340,000 homeowners in California lost property health and uh, health property insurance coverage in three years due to wildfires 2015 through 2018. Uh, these wildfires are increasing in frequency and intensity. It's only a sample of what's to come. We're looking at entire zones now that are totally uninsurable. This Jesse Keenan, uh, Harvard lecturer who focuses on urban development and climate adaptation. I see no end to the challenges for insurance when it comes to climate change. Flooding is another area where you're going to see a lack of availability and affordability. We'll soon be seeing what he calls climate redlining. Redlining practice insurance companies engaged in for decades starting in the 30s when companies would outline black neighborhoods on a city map and declare them uninsurable. Climate change will cause many neighborhoods to be excluded from insurance policies. And we're already seeing this happen. Federal disaster aid can often be limited or delayed, which is one reason having home insurance is so crucial. Many families do not have savings to repair a severely damaged home, and for some, taking on debt can be burdensome or not feasible. There is really no substitute for insurance for having the need, the needed funds quickly post-disaster. Uh, unfortunately, often those who need the coverage the most are the least likely to be able to afford it. Fires on the West Coast, record flooding in the Middle West, in the Midwest, and the ferocious hurricanes battering the Southeast will all contribute to a significant decrease in home insurance availability. This is coming, <clears throat> and it's going to come soon. Uh, I think 2020, we're going to see an awful lot of really ooh, hardship. Many are feeling it already. Uh, will you be feeling it in 2020? I think a lot of you will be. Not only is that bad news uh, for people who are worried about being able to rebuild after a disaster, for many, it's a threat to their ability to remain homeowners because, well, uh, you don't have insurance. Well, you may as well default on your mortgage. Uh, if you have paid your mortgage, good luck selling your home. The super wealthy can self-insure. For others, they will no doubt be forced into eventual foreclosure because they're defaulting on their mortgages. Most lenders require a mortgage holder to insure their home in order to maintain the mortgage. If the insurance company in the area decides their neighborhood is too risky to insure, then they will lose coverage and likely default on their mortgage. If the mortgage is already paid, yeah, good luck selling it. Uh, you, you, well, there's got to be a reason 
a real strong reason for someone to be wanting to buy your home when they know that they can't get insurance for it? Sooner than later, entire neighborhoods are going to be uninsurable and people are going to be trapped. People across the country finding themselves defaulting on their mortgages simply because their neighborhood is no longer affordable. Um, Keenan said there will no doubt be a lot of displacement. Well, they sure do want to get people out of those gray zones and into the mega regions. And sorry for those who don't know anything about the reshaping of our country, please check out my playlists. Uh, anything titled Agenda 2030 or put in the search bar of YouTube, Agenda 2030. And, and you can check out This Side America 2050 and it has the mega region map, the emerging mega regions and you can hear from an awful lot of people, government officials, architects, um, those, you know, the climate activists, um, city planners, mega regions. That's like the term. It's no longer, hey, a city in New York. It's the mega region. Um, and these are the mega regions right here. The gray, the gray, they want people out of, and everybody will just be living in uh, in one of the colored areas, the Front Range, the Northern California mega region, Southern California, Cascadia, up north uh, into Canada. You got the Arizona Sun Corridor. You got the Texas Triangle, uh, the Gulf Coast and Piedmont Atlantic, you got uh, Florida, and the Northeast and the Great Lakes. And in this gray area, they want everybody out. So uh, they bring it about by using weather as a weapon, flooding people out. They bring it about by impoverishing areas and people have to move to regions of the country where there are jobs. And if you check out uh, where a lot of corporations are setting up or have been set up, it's in the mega regions. Um, and they can also do it by redlining. Redlining. So, and they're also doing it by making it exceedingly hard to own property today because of the expense. So uh, what makes this already difficult is that people who are least capable of bearing this kind of financial burden will likely be the first ones who have to face this reality. As many of the threatened areas are inhabited by socioeconomically vulnerable people. Florida has in the past pressured insurance companies to maintain home insurance coverage by threatening to not allow those companies to offer things like car insurance in the state if they pull out. Well, ill-conceived approach since insurance companies will likely just offer worse insurance plans or pull out of the state completely, which we are seeing already happening. The only way you're actually going to keep insurance availability and affordability sustainable is by investing in climate change adaptation. What does that mean? It means that states buy out homeowners, and I've posted videos on the buyouts, FEMA buyouts. You have towns, uh, communities, cities, and states buying people's property that has been flooded repeatedly, uh, 
well, it's not Mother Nature. It's man flooding repeatedly specific areas. And then they realize, okay, well, I'm now in a flood prone area. My house has been flooded, you know, three or four times. It's going to be very hard for me to sell it even if I still have insurance because the premiums for flood insurance have skyrocketed. Um, and well, here we are. We can't afford to repair so many times. We're not going to be able to sell it. So you got those government officials coming in and saying, hey, we'll buy it. And the towns, cities, states, they give a percentage and FEMA covers most of the buyout. And the entire, what's the condition of the buyout? The condition that FEMA puts on these buyout programs, no structures will be built in the area where the homes have been bought out. It will be green or really it'll be gray. Yeah, it's happening guys. So uh, states can buy out homeowners in risky areas, set up the infrastructure to help mitigate flood and fire damage <clears throat> and inform prospective homeowners of what areas they should avoid if they want to be able to secure property insurance in the future. Elevate your home or we'll take away your insurance. Um, fireproof your home or we will take away insurance. But insurance in many areas now is just being canceled. So uh, states need to start prepping, prep, preparing for the effects of climate change now to avoid a potential home insurance crisis down the road. They used to ask if you're in a good school zone. Now they want to know if you're in an insurable zone. <sighs> Okie dokie. Stay safe, everybody. And start really thinking about that future. Even if it's just, you know, within the la uh, next five years. Because um, a whole lot is going to be taking place. Well, in the next 12 years, actually. Because, well, they have a date, 2030. 2030, 12 years. Well, it was 12 years in 2018, um, but there's gonna be a whole lot going on in just the next couple of years that is gonna be really shocking to an awful lot of people. Unfortunately, it's gonna be shocking, not in a good positive way. Because they got to clear the area, guys. And, uh, yeah, they have sped up the agendas. Every year we have seen an acceleration, certainly of Agenda 2030, the weather being used as a weapon. Uh, we're going to see an acceleration more and more. We're going to see things. I think, I really do think, that what we're living right now, it was unimaginable to me years ago. I keep trying to imagine what's coming. All I know is we're in for one hell of a ride. All links are below. Have a good night.